I'm Mark Darren, a designer on Tales of Monkey Island. This is episode three, Lair of the Leviathan. I'm Mike Stemley, a designer on Tales of Monkey Island, and I did absolutely nothing on this episode. Uh, I'm Jake Rodkin, I co-directed this episode. I'm Eric Parsons, cinematic artist on this episode. And Daniel Rivera, cinematic artist on this episode. I'm Sean Vanneman, and I wrote this episode. I'm Joe Pinney, and I designed this episode. And they apparently just got swallowed by a giant manatee. Good yeah. heavens. The first time I saw that Hi, manatee I'm get mocked up in. and swallow a ship, I about I'm lost sorry, my I'm mind. <laughs> so good. Cool. Uh, uh, how did we decide it was going to be a manatee anyway? <laughs> Because manatees are funny, funny animals. I, we, I will we, say that I think that I proposed manatee as a joke, and then you, Mike, latched onto it immediately. <laughs> Typical. Like, Typical. I mean, the, the original outline for this episode was Guybrush Morgan. Guybrush and Morgan get trapped in a sea monster and have to deal with stuff. Right, I mean, the, the, yeah. the sort of thrill line of the episode was there from the beginning, but it wasn't originally a manatee, and then it was. I, I cried a small manatee. Because <laughs> <laughs> manatees are funny, and those are really creepy looking. The grub? Yes. Yeah. Grubs are creepy. Could, uh, could someone explain to me why a Spanish conquistador says esponja? Just curious. Because it's creative choice. I don't, ask don't questions. know how to pronounce things in other <laughs> languages or spell things in other languages, as evidenced by the German flag in the first episode. <laughs> the floor here looks a lot like SpaghettiOs. I was about to say that exact thing. That's another creative choice. <laughs> there was some reference given yeah. SpaghettiOs primarily. Yeah. Ah, delicious manatee tongue. Yeah. Oh, the newlywed game. You guys should talk about the newlywed game. The newlywed game. How did that, that, how did that come up? Uh, on the video screen here. <laughs> That's true. But uh, how did we even... I don't remember how that came about, other than we wanted... We knew that he was going to be an obsessive uh, romantic, but we didn't know. Like We knew that he was going to be jealous of them, but we didn't know. Uh, and we wanted boatloads of like relationship stuff in this episode. It's all about trust and betrayal. Yeah, the themes were established early, I feel yeah. like. Like, from, like, week one, we knew that it was going to be about. We wanted to also get um, Morgan and Guybrush's uh, relationship pushed forward in a big way for all the eventual reversals to come later on. Yeah, teasing their whatever, their, their almost romance, making a moment out of that. The most important moment in the game, as I recall. That was that comes later. The emotional linchpin. The yes, emotional linchpin of the episode. <laughs> this is yeah, this is basically all about her discovering that Guybrush isn't the kind of mighty pirate she thinks he is. Yeah. Yeah. But still in his heart he, he's a mighty pirate of his own c kind. You know. <laughs> he's a legend in his own mind. <laughs> and we also want to have deep and complex characterization, such as these as these completely unexplored <laughs> Personality types. <laughs> Nerd stoner guy. Exactly. <laughs> Nerd stoner guy, hard ass. Looking for your run of the mill manatee, Coplio. Hey. Classic tropes of any pirate story. And if I did, that would be a secret of the brotherhood. Yeah. Brotherhood? Democratically united brotherhood of the manatee. Yeah. But by this no, time, we, we've sorry. actually gotten our characters to look remarkably different by this point, though, which is a big plus. Yeah, I think we had hit our stride with the tall, skinny guy looking different than the uh, and the other guys, and also the short, fat guy. Yeah, it was all about hair and glasses. And uh, well, we broke up their silhouettes, which was nice. I just don't understand how we were able to get Bug Eye and Guybrush to make all the same faces in the face. <laughs> yeah, how, how would we ever do that? It took a lot of work. <laughs> oh, that, oh, oh, we man, just missed my go. favorite line where he says, Awesome! <laughs> Here's this guy. Yeah. The <laughs> funny yes. story about writing Murray is that I was terrified to do it because I thought the fans would um, skewer me. So I asked Dave Grossman to do it. And, um... Grossman didn't. <laughs> 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 and he walked into my office like mm, a week before the script was due and said, you know those Murray lines that I've been working on? Yeah. He's like, oh, those aren't done. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I sat down and wrote Murray all in one fell swoop, which is probably better, I guess, because it, it, it made him sound the same the whole way through. Yep. But 
You just talked over the death of Santino. Oh, Santino. Man. Santino. He's so cool. Joe and I really have a spiritual connection to Santino. Yeah. Admiration. <laughs> and it probably came out better that way, because you were under pressure, and you were just like... Yeah, the pressure, I think, allowed lines to come out that probably wouldn't have, which is kind of the classic Telltale writing trope. <laughs> there are jokes that definitely, well, upon a second pass, would not have, I would have not have let them made the cut. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like the double fine joke that is made um, after this somewhere. Yeah, I would not have made that joke. Uh, it's in there, so enjoy that. <laughs> So some of the uh, battles that we uh, sometimes try to iron out is, you know, whether or not Marie's eyebrows are going to be moving or things of that sort. But uh, with the skull, there's really not much else you can do. Uh, right. Or, or yeah. pretty much in the grain. And yeah. yeah. It's, it's one of those things that works way more correctly when when Murray was like a six-frame animation. Yeah. And now he... Oh, monkey, oh, monkey face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of revs of Murray, too. Yeah. And revs of the voice acting and revs of the... Uh, the model. Yeah, Murray went through a lot of revisions, Check and we actually had Denny oh, Delk in the studio for quite a while, and nice, at the yeah. end of the day, yeah, it turned out really well. What yeah. were you looking at that I missed? Oh no, Fish Eyes Alabaster. There was a giant backstory written for Fish Eyes Alabaster that got cut from the game. Oh yeah. By Joe. Yeah. While I, I was, <laughs> <laughs> while I was, uh, where was I? I, 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 abused, was in, yeah, I was on vacation. I abused <laughs> your well, you script so yeah. horribly. There was definitely. I should. We should find a place to post that somewhere in the DVD. And so this is a, an example of classic. Great ideas coming from the you. People. You came up with that. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> some <laughs> brilliant, genius. yeah, some incredible genius. Yeah. Monkey the face whole, competition. The uh, whole face-off was uh, Dave Bowman, Bowman, our art director's yeah. concept. Well, that's true. You pitched it to me via Dave Bowman, oh, <laughs> as yours. I say. <laughs> that's right. <yeah. laughs> but then I took credit for it. But the idea came from him, which, which is, is also so great. A classic Funny is Dave Bogan guess. went missing in the middle of production. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Nice. Yes. Yeah. When we realized that we could just that moving an eye was really easy, yeah. um, that the choreographers weren't gonna have a hard time with that, um, that made me happy. This competition yeah. is over. <laughs> so things that uh, made Dave Bogan happy are the bongo syncing uh, with the rest of the music. Oh, that was, yeah. <laughs> yes, this, this and, and that absolutely did not take a month of work to do. That, yeah, that made Dave really I'm happy. This environment sleep, made made Dave and Nick Herman, who was the choreographer on the scene, very happy, and it made Randy, who was our lead programmer, very sad. Because this environment has like music syncing up with the bongos. Every character has their own theme. Uh, Nick went in and made all the little ducks like make little gas farts come out of them all the time, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which then have to turn off whenever you're using them. Like, it's really cool though. I don't know. Yeah, it turned out great, but there was a lot of uh, you can hear the game developers screaming if you uh, right. play it in reverse. If you turn the music down, actually, the ambient track exactly. is just ready <laughs> screaming. Yeah. 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 So I believe episode three is also the first time where the pox actually projects light onto other characters. Ooh, Ooh. We have new pox technology. Yeah, there's some canon behind that, I think. Yeah, that, 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 that was evidenced in that Winslow in the ship. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's coming out at all, but... Hey, there's a double fine. Hey, there's a double fine. We're sorry. Funnier we when you play no the game. <laughs> So also, uh, did anyone actually try to figure out the grub thing, solving the puzzle? There are some yeah, about two days after we shipped. Yeah. <laughs> well, someone just cracked the code. Yeah, someone you know, installed some the utility. Can peek into memory and then they just modified it so they had a hundred thousand grubs. Excuse me. Yeah. But it's on YouTube somewhere. I think Mike can check that out. A little grub collected theme, but I think I don't think it got in. <laughs> oh really? Oh. <laughs> Dude, I think it got purged out because people forgot to put it into that cutscene. Maybe I'll find it and make it my ringtone. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> no, I, I love this. This is like such a little... There's yeah. hardly any gameplay here, but I just love the, the feeling of this bit. Yeah, this came out really well. I remember yeah. reading the original pitch where they were running between several different rooms. Yeah. And I just yes. couldn't imagine how you could pull it off. Yeah, this and, was uh, a, a triumph of being forced to cut it down into something that actually worked. Yeah. Even, though, really even nice then, moment. it's like designing and like then sitting there with, you know, in dialogue trying to write this. You're like, hi, this is, how is this going to work? How is this going to work? But like, it's really well framed and, oh, yeah. Sweet uh, This is why having cinematic artists is the best. Yeah. 
Nick Herman. Yeah, Nick Herman Nick kicked Herman. some ass on that hole. Manatee bit. Cutaway! Oh, Manatee Cutaway! Oh, yes, Whoa. Jake Rodkin. Yes. <laughs> Manatee Cutaways were key. They're oh, let's not forget. Back yeah. to an old, like, <laughs> submarine movie trope. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for those stupid Manatee Cutaways, because you gotta, you gotta go Hunter in October style, where you just get to, like... No, 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 no more clockwise. Uh, this escape is Greg Killian, and it's a really nice thing. Whoa! The end. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, wait, hey, hey. Oh, slash. Yuck! That could have been worse. Really? Just a quick trip up the blowhole. Manatees don't have blowholes. What? <gasps> I think that was the first joke. We might have recorded manatees yeah. don't have blowholes yeah. like 35 times. <laughs> trying, to, like, <laughs> trying to like, well they don't. I'm like, I know, but like, <laughs> Mickey, <laughs> work with me. <laughs> Guybrush can hold his breath for 10 minutes. Is that so? Yeah, it's a skill I developed in college. Well then, what are you waiting for? What was he doing in college? <laughs> I know, that was supposedly nice. a really filthy joke. <laughs> but... <laughs> Make it yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, this place is nice. I stole directly. It's from Monkey 2. <laughs> the scale yeah. of no, this scene made me so Monkey happy. Two. I remember being in this room and trying to draw the scale of it on that whiteboard. Uh -oh. and yeah. And people being like, I don't know. The whiteboard know. right behind him right now. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> this environment's huge. Uh, no, it's just so a wall lovely. with rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Parsons. That is best. You mean the that was all of Eric's work will be showing. <laughs> yeah. Was that, uh, was that all uh, dog, that dog title thing uh, planned from the beginning? Or? No. That was you and you and Dave Bogan, Eric? Yeah, that, yeah. that was somewhere uh, halfway through production that, that we need more clean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. His dog pedal. Oh, is this the the key to the whole episode? The yes. emotional linchpin? <laughs> Everything? <laughs> Just watch this. this Vanaman's pride. Vanaman's <laughs> pride. <laughs> I don't like you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely is, though. It's terrific. This is another thing that took forever to record. But we got it. And took forever to compose. I hugged <laughs> Nikki after she, this. like, finally, well, after this was finally recorded. And then we could get the sponge? Yes. And then we could And then get my the next sponge. snap. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> don't <guy. laughs> That hurt. They keep calling it the, the emotional linchpin, by the way, because in the file where the game is written, it is highlighted in big, bold letters that this scene is important. <laughs> because oftentimes we have, made, we have to do so much to get an episode out that things like that will. Right. It's like, oh, this is just everyone talking, so it's cheap. It's like, oh, yeah, there's just a lot of talking. Right. There's no action. Right. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely one of the scenes I kind of had my. I was holding my breath for because I, I knew this that was where we started to build the relationship with Morgan and, and Guybrush and really build it up and I was waiting to make sure it happened just right and it came out beautifully. I love that right before, Murray, very happy. Uh, right before Murray is knocked back into the ocean he self-identifies as Santino. <laughs> or it's like he has a, he's like, I'm Santino. He's assumed that was the Santino time, identity. Yeah. I figured by he, he should call himself Santino once and shoot right before right, he's yeah. no longer Santino. Like, oh, this isn't so bad. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. Um, uh, that was a, that was a good design session. The possessing. Uh, the possession. Oh session. yeah, the possession. <laughs> the possession yeah, possessing yeah. the voodoo lady. We did go around and around on that, and we talked about her wandering the island and meeting people and talking to them and all this stuff. Oh yeah, it was originally you possess the voodoo lady and actually walk her over to the singes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we, 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 we just wanted to possess the voodoo lady or possess Guybrush's hand and walk him around with Sailor a little tricorder right. hat and <laughs> sail the world. world. Yeah, that was gonna be cool. There was gonna be a whole like three hour mini That's game right. yeah. where yeah. you were just yeah. But the uh, hand. Uh, again, you but know, then we couldn't to... we couldn't ship the whole entirety of Flotsam. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah I couldn't get Flotsam. In. So was yet, yet another uh, forced into a smaller but better. Way better. Zone. Yeah. And I remember when you pitched me the uh, the tarot card mechanic. <laughs> I was like, that, that's never going to work. And I love it. It's one of my favorite things in the whole game. Yeah, I remember the look of scorn in your eyes. This is stupid. Thanks, Mark. Like Guybrush's um, acknowledgement of his voodoo lady jiggle when he gets into her body <laughs> and is looking at it. Oh, it makes me so happy. Is that Bogan? Sure. Yeah, he would make that. Yeah, yeah, he would have it. I remember debating for a while whether the possessed voodoo lady should have Guybrush's voice, or the voodoo lady trying to do Guybrush's voice. Yeah, yeah. he made the right was, call. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think he definitely did. It was. Yeah. I think it'd be really tough to. I mean, she's already doing the voodoo lady's voice. Right. Like. <laughs> 
Eric, you want to talk about uh, manatee love and putting it together? Um, <laughs> sweet, you heard me. sweet My manatee. therapist would recommend that I don't talk about manatee love <laughs> anymore. Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> it just reminds me so much of the end of that Star Trek movie. <laughs> Oh yeah, there totally is the Star Trek Four whales. Yeah, at the very end of this scene where they there's also where they go corkscrewing out. I don't know if it makes it into the uh, into this commentary, but uh, I also did put a Star Destroyer shot with a manatee. Right oh, I love that. Here it is. This. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I just I love it. Oh my god. Dun 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 dun. What are you It's nothing copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> This game is so, uh, see, relationships, love, 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 love connections. You guys want to talk about how you originally wanted? Back to back. Yeah. Yeah. You guys originally wanted to uh, dress up the manatee with lipstick. Yeah, that was and, a bad uh, idea. <laughs> oh, that was a genius idea. Are you kidding? Uh, that would have been great. Look how huge that sponge is. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is another there's no thing. way that it's only the size of a tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> that is gorgeous. Oh. Kudos on pulling that off. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, Eric. <laughs> uh, I think I think as a company, our sight gags are getting more sophisticated. <laughs> In that we're doing them now. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, I just I've been seeing some stuff lately. Dude, did you not play this one, Mark? He's hovering. I played it once. <laughs> whenever once. whenever anything big happens, it just has to go to white. Yeah, that's like a, that's a new <laughs> Monkey Island trope. Time to take my sponge of to a lane. Yeah, I'm gonna do that now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we finally got it. We really hoodwinked old Coronado, eh? Now, I'm just gotta get back to her. <gasps> Grab you idiot. No. <laughs> Joe, this is like a pitch for the game. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's design pitches are really entertain entertaining, by the way. There are voices then. This is the end of the line. Oh, I forgot that he shows him back <laughs> the the That's right. I totally. That's not in the script. That's just genius uh, choreography. Yeah, there are so many little touches added to make it all. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one moment where the voice actor is standing next to himself. Versus Culture Shock Max. Yeah. Versus Phony Book. Yeah, this this episode should just be dedicated to Andrew Chaikin in some sense. Also known as Kid Beyond. Google it. No, but I bet the blade of the final collaboration between the two star crossed people. Daniel, do you want to talk about setting this up and then going away to have a baby? Leaving everyone else to finish it? One thing I did uh, accomplish, yes. I think, was was a ship uh, sailing away, and if you uh, if you hang out in that moment for too long, the ship disappears. Oh yeah, the cava leaves in the back. No. Huh. He forgot the sponge. Fact him isn't right next to that up. giant nail. Yes, sir. <laughs> then empty the cannons on him, me hardies. Uh, I love the textures on the A little uh, thing the about the empty the cannons on him, me hardies, is a reference to a line <laughs> Andrew Langley wrote for a fake <laughs> Monkey Island <laughs> audio. First things first. What was the deal with that, Jake? Oh, yeah, you did get those in there. Yeah. Was, yeah. Mix and Mojo is a like, LucasArts fan yeah, site, and at some point, uh, like April 1st, like 2003, uh, <laughs> An extreme heist was pulled where LucasArts gave permission to get Dominic Armato to record a bunch of fake lines as if they were leaked from Monkey Island 5. And now some of those lines are in the game. Because Andrew and I kept begging writers to sneak them in. Yes. Yeah. Andrew also got in on the crew forms. Uh, oh, I can't remember one of Guybrush's favorite things. Is Andrew Langley. Yeah. <laughs> Is programmer Andrew Langley, yeah. <laughs> oh man, extreme horsehead. Yeah. This is Dennis Lennart again. Taking over for uh, absent Daniel. <laughs> yeah, we always thought it was funny that you could tell sometimes when the when the Wallace and Gromit choreographers ended up on Monkey because suddenly the cameras would just go completely bananas and all this. I don't know. I don't know why it was them. Well, it's unleashed unleashed Fuhrer because uh, <laughs> just I can go crazy with them now. <laughs> yeah. And he did. Oh man. Yeah, like great shot. Uh, so this shot is not our approved. <laughs> Icor. Does anyone uh, see eyes in the 90s nose? Or is it just me? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, what? Right? <laughs> I will now. Oh, in my nightmares. <laughs> no, no, that's not good. Now that I think about it, keeping that seahorse head in my pants the entire time I was underwater probably wasn't the safest course of action. I was a Dave Grossman. 
Dave Gresham. Well <laughs> that was all him, I think. I mean, ending line. So th this wasn't the emotional linchpin. Uh, I think uh, the acting was pretty heavy in this too. Like there's a lot going on with Morgan mm -hmm. uh, trying to make her final decision. Yeah, there was a lot of back and forth on where she should be, you know, how far behind him, what her expression is. Is she having a good time? Is she grim and determined? Is she psyched? How do we make it look like manatees are going under the boat? The boat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important. The size disparity on the manatees will make me happy forever, by the way. <laughs> Just the obscene disparity. Yeah. yeah it's basically God of War. Everyone's so happy here, too. Yeah. Whoever nature tells them to, I imagine. <gasps> oh, man. My heart breaks. That's nice. I don't oh. <laughs> oh, forehead <laughs> off of the railing. <laughs> oh man. <Yeah. laughs> is that it? Oh man, yeah, this is, is it. Wait, oh, is the epilogue in here? Keep going. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 nice. oh, oh, oh. oh right, oh right, this is episode three. Best part of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. The best um, part of the episode. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so here's yeah, this. <laughs> the thing about this is, um, this was with a re-record of Denny Delk, and Mark, you were with me in the studio, and then we did this, but um, it was all like, he would just pick a name that we had on a list, and he'd be like, tell me something about this guy, and we kind of just cooked up things in the studio. Like Eric, who's sitting here, tell me something about Eric. I'm like, uh, uh, pretty boy. <laughs> <laughs> and Murray says to me, tell it to someone who cares. So whatever you told Danny Delk, I'm sure it was complimentary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we almost cut the Dan Connors line because we thought it might really anger Dan. Um, don't piss and you off don't the boss. Want Dan. But it's still in there. I believe I'll, I'll name names now. I asked you, Joe Penny, if it was okay to include that. And you said, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. you're good for it. Yeah. Because I definitely went to Joe and said, Joe, you got to take the fall for that one, even though I was... For Murray mocking our CEO. <laughs> even though... <laughs> in the game. That's the one line I think I did feed him. I did feed uh, Denny Duck. You're fired now. I know. Wow. So when that's this a, Jake. That's a lot of environment he's traversing. How did he... How do we manage to have such a Oh, it's actually one-to-one -one from... The, it's like down to a crazy, you know trench at the bottom of the sea. Murray actually falls 15 scale miles in this shot. Well, you know, he's also been falling for a while. He fell into the water, you know, a good 20 minutes ago. So uh, he actually gets blown around by the current, uh, which the, the low pressure pushes it back up to the surface. Yeah, people have been asking what adventures Murray has after you knock off his head, and that's pretty much where this is Murray continuity now. Is yeah. 20 minutes being blown around by the ocean. Yeah, he did hang out with Treasure Crab for a while, right? Oh man, Treasure Crab. Yes. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, two breakaway characters from this game are Winslow and the Treasure Crab. Yeah. <laughs> or Breakout. Breakaway, tearaway characters. It's important to note that we <laughs> do thank you. Yes, you. Yes. It's important. Oh, and it's important that Brendan Ferguson remains a pet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brendan. There's a reason why I wasn't here. Yeah. You had Leah. monkey babies. <laughs> yes. Yes. Little baby One of Leah. about eight or nine Wait, monkey babies on this project. Yep. Well, yeah, you guys face. basically birthed an entirely new Telltale team <laughs> during the <laughs> right. making of Monkey Island. We birthed, birthed the Out From Boneville production team, in yeah. fact. Yeah. Oh, there's Treasure Crab. With two sets of twins help, I guess. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, it's over. Yeah. Well, that was fun. But wait. But wait, there's wait, more? There's more? Oh, yeah. Oh, Coda. Nice. Coda. Forgot. Yes. <laughs> Winslow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here's the thing. Is when somebody tells you you don't have enough budget to have a character in an episode. <laughs> I don't think we do. realized just how awesome Winslow was until... Until Mark, Mark wrote him in, too. Yeah. So too. Yeah. And so naturally, I got rid of him in four. I know. <laughs> As two was getting produced, Mark had brought Winslow to life. We're done now, though. <laughs> and... Oh. <laughs> it's really over now. It's over. Uh, it's okay. over. Thanks. Right. That's it. Perfect timing.